We begin with a CBC News analysis of the Conservative leader's fundraising. Pierre Polyev positions himself as a champion for the working class who almost never speaks anywhere close to Bay Street or downtown Toronto. But some digging uncovered more than 50 fundraisers featuring Polyev since he became leader at some of the most elite locations in Canada. The CBC's Kate McKenna is one of our reporters on that story, and she's here now. So, Kate, you've been working on this with your colleague uh, Ashley Burke. What did you two find? Well, David, we started looking into this a few weeks ago, and we were sort of digging around the publicly available information on political fundraising to see what kind of stood out to us. And what did stand out pretty much immediately is that Pierre Polyev seems to be ramping up the number of events that he's holding, these private events, uh, holding more of them so far this year than he did at the same time last year. So then we took an even closer look at who was attending them and where they were. Uh, so uh, we cross-referenced the uh, lists that are made publicly uh, available on the Elections Canada website with the lobbying registry. And there we found that uh, he's uh, met with or been at the same events with uh, more than 100 registered lobbyists, uh, a couple dozen of those active lobbyists. And uh, he's also met with some of some very big names in Canadian business, you know, names that the ordinary Canadians would recognize uh, from industries like pharmaceutical companies, airline executives, past and present, oil and gas executives. Uh, and more. And then we zoomed out even further and we started looking at some of the postal codes where these things were happening, including uh, multiple uh, events held in the financial district in Toronto. We know we heard he told the CD uh, Institute or the CD Howe Institute yep. uh, last year that uh, he doesn't like going very near uh, Bay Street. Uh, we also saw some uh, of the most exclusive clubs in Canada, including the Toronto Club, the Royal Glenora Club in Edmonton, the Terminal City Club in Vancouver, as well as uh, private homes in some of uh, Canada's most wealthy neighbourhoods, including Westmount in Montreal and Toronto's Forest Hill. So, But David, one thing we want to be clear about in this reporting is that this is not only legal, the Liberals do versions of this as well. So that's something that we hope uh, that helped frame our reporting. There's nothing wrong with holding these events. Uh, in fact, the Conservative Party, when they were last in power, uh, they lowered the maximum donation uh, that's that's mm -hmm. uh, legally able to be made to political parties. No, but it, it's certainly interesting, given some of the political rhetoric that's been used in the past, you know, uh, criticizing the Liberals for holding these things, recent comments about lobbyists and, and other people who uh, attend fundraisers for the other side of the House of Commons. But as you say, this is all legal. So what are the concerns? Uh, what are whatever problems uh, may exist with all this? Well, again, some people might say that there are no problems, but a couple of people that we spoke with uh, kind of pointed to what might be perceived as an optics problem for Polyev. Uh, and, and of course, that's top of mind for a lot of people who read political news because mm -hmm. uh, last week he published an article in the National Post, the newspaper, where he uh, was critical of uh, big businesses' relationship with uh, government, or, uh, accusing them essentially of cozying up to the governing liberals uh, to not working on behalf of ordinary people and I think the headline actually said you know fire your lobbyists so in the context of knowing that he's holding these these uh, fundraising events and ultimately meeting with uh, some of these people that kind of caught our eye as we were working on this reporting uh, and and we put the question to NDP critic uh, Matthew Green he's the ethics critic uh, who said by having these events kind of held privately they are posted on the conservative website but they're mm -hmm. not widely publicized uh, and then saying something else publicly, Polyev is speaking out of both sides of his mouth. These are country club conservatives. This is not an everyday man uh, who, you know, who brags about working for the working class in the afternoon and then the evening goes to these really exclusive clubs most Canadians would have never even heard of to raise the bulk of his money. We also spoke with uh, Ian Stedman, who is a professor at York University and sort of an expert on uh, what are sometimes called cash for access events. Mm -hmm. And he said that it, it, it can create a perception problem, not just for the Conservatives, but also for any political party that has them, because it grants the opportunity for people with deeper pockets uh, to be able to access decision makers in, in an easier way. Uh, but uh, we also spoke with two uh, Conservatives, not affiliate not directly affiliated with the party right now but we just wanted to get their percept their their view on how these work uh, also and they said the 
legal limit for donation is quite, in their view, low. It's 1725. That's probably not, in their view, enough to be able to buy any sort of uh, public uh, public sort of strategy or or, or policy effort. Uh, and also that uh, they say it's would be very unheard of, very unusual to actually lobby at an event like that. Uh, here is what one person told us. Maybe there's a, there's a bit of mythology around fundraising events. People picture, you know, cigars and brandy snifters and mahogany, you know, furniture. These things are, it's, it's a lot, really, it's a lot like a town hall meeting. We've all seen town hall meetings. You've broadcast live from town hall meetings with the prime minister or party leaders. They really look a lot like that, except it's a closed event. You need to buy a ticket to get in. But Ian Stedman, who we just heard from the professor at York University, said even if there's no active lobbying going on there, which which there there shouldn't be under the lobbying rules, uh, it is an opportunity to kind of build relationships that could lead to lobbying down the road. And so these these things should be watched closely. Okay, uh, it's interesting though that he called lobbyists useless and overpaid, and urged corporate Canada to fire them. And then he's uh, they're attending fundraisers uh, for Mr. Polyev. So, as you said, we've seen this with the Liberals in the past. They have come under scrutiny for what was dubbed cash for access events in 2017, but that led to some changes. So, what changes came out of that? Yeah. So early in uh, the in, in their original mandate, the Globe and Mail uh, revealed that Trudeau attended a fundraiser with a Chinese businessman who went on to uh, donate. $200,000 to the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. And to sort of uh, fight the claims that liberals were giving wealthy donors preferential access to Trudeau and his cabinet, they changed the rules uh, for uh, their party uh, in uh, 2017 uh, to limit these spaces to publicly available spaces, as mm -hmm. well as to uh, allow journalists access should they want to go to these events. The government also changed the law uh, in 2018 to require that parties make fundraisers more uh, transparent. So now uh, the parties have to post online notices about these fundraisers in advance, and they also have to report details, including a list of at attendees uh, to Elections Canada. Uh, now, it's worth noting, perhaps, that uh, when that bill was going through Parliament, the Conservatives actually uh, voted against it. Uh, at the time, the fa finance critic uh, said that this genre of fundraiser is unethical mm. and uh, was against uh, legalizing what he called cash for access uh, or, or paying to get access to decision makers. Okay, that was then. What are the Conservatives, uh, what is the party saying today about the findings uh, in your reporting? So we put them uh, to the party. Uh, they responded in a statement. Uh, they said that uh, CBC is exposing its bias by investigating Canadians who are supporting common sense conservative leader Pierre Polyev and its promise to defund the CBC. The statement also uh, said that the average donation for the Conservative Party last year uh, was 175 dollars, which is well below uh, the limit. And, and we do know from our own research that in the first quarter of this year, the Conservatives broke their own fine, uh, their own uh, fundraising uh, record and had 50,000 uh, people donate uh, to their party. And of that, only a few hundred would have been from these uh, private events with the leader. So that is important context as we are rounding out this reporting. Okay, Kate, thank you so much. That's the CBC's Kate McKenna. So while Pierre Polyev positions himself as a champion for the working class who almost never speaks anywhere close to Bay Street or downtown Toronto, some digging uncovered more than 50 fundraisers featuring Polyev since he became leader at some of the most elite locations in Canada with dozens of lobbyists and the heads of large corporations. We're going to talk about that now with the Tuesday Power Panel. Emily Nicola is a columnist with Le Devoir. Michelle Cadario is a former Liberal campaign director. Francoise Boivin is a former NDP MP, and here with me in studio, Kate Harrison is a conservative political analyst. Um, Michelle, I, I'd like to start with you. Uh, what, what do you make of uh, these revelations? There's nothing illegal or improper here, that's for sure. Uh, but when the Liberals did similar things, they were called cash for access for party insiders. What's different about this, or is it just the same? How do you see it? Well, you know, it's uh, just Pierre being Pierre and being, uh, you know, a little bit two-faced, I guess, is the best way to say it. Um, if it's going into my pocket, it's okay. If it's going into somebody else's, it's not. Um, I'm going to trash who you are and what you do and what you might um, want. Um, but, you know, I'm going to take all of your money. Listen, I don't begrudge him from doing fundraisers. Just don't be a hypocrite, I think, is the is the issue. Um, you know, they are very good at fundraising and all the power to him. I, I don't um, understand, though, why he um, has to pretend to be something that he's not and to, you know,
know, suggests that uh, you have to listen to the people and it's, um, you know, great slogan, but, you know, how exactly does he see that happening? Does he want more money going to advertising agencies? Is that how he sees uh, co- things happening for companies and trying to reorient the, the um, how Ottawa might work? And let's be honest, the majority of actual lobbying, not to be on this panel to stand up for that industry, but it's the mundane and boring and, you know, it's the inner workings of regulation and it's, you know, not the big, big, sexy stuff. Um, so, you know, he thinks he can have it both ways. And I guess, uh, you know, while the money's still coming into his pocket, um, he's going to continue with it. What's so, stopping him? So, Kay, how do you how do you square this? Like, uh, you know, Michelle says hypocrisy is at play here. I mean, he wrote that op-ed in the in the National Post saying fire lobbyists, you know, and ignore politicians, go to the people. He's called them utterly useless and, and overpaid. And then hey, they're all at his events, or not all, but there's, they're frequently at his yeah, events. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it would be hypocritical if he weren't also being accessible to everyday Canadians. So if he were, you know, talking about how lobbying... Um, is, is not an effective tool, but then he were also kind of being, only meeting with that, that constituency, uh, then there might be a case to be made there. But I think, you know, what, what I took away from reading that piece is not uh, a, a slam against lobbying overall. I think it's about talking about doing lobbying a little bit differently. Uh, and a lot of the principles that he put forward, and I, I say this as a lobbyist, are just mm-hmm. generally good government relations practices talking to the people, the end users of the policy in question, not just relying on senior executives and leadership to deliver a message via a phone call or a friend-to-friend relationship or a fundraiser relationship. Um, I think when you're talking about this from a brand perspective, a lot of people could assess that Pierre Polyev is probably not likely to go implement policy based on something somebody says to him at a fundraiser. Uh, More likely, it's going to be um, what workers and uh, associations, et cetera, grassroots people are actually saying in order to achieve something. So it's not, I don't view it as a slam on lobbying. I think it's much more about um, who's sharing the message to whom. Um, And as long as you make something, have have a tangible kind of outcome that you can realize from the result, result of your policy change and you're talking to workers and people mm. impacted, I think that that's really what he's getting at. Okay, so Francoise, help me then understand Kate's point with Pierre Polyev saying they're utterly useless and overpaid, which you know, sounds like a slam on, on <laughs> lobbyists to be in plain English, right? So, but like, what does, it, what does this tell us? Like, because when you say things like that, it implies you're not going to have much to do with them. And then we find out through the fundraising records that there has been some, some levels of content. And, and also the National Post uh, has some reporting today on the number of lobbyists who have met with Mr. Polyev since he's uh, been leader. I mean, what, what do you make of it all? Well, he, he could uh, maybe publicize himself as the Robin Hood of big, uh, big industry, and uh, he's taking the money of the rich, but he will obey to the people on the street and, and so on and so forth. He can argue quite uh, easily that uh, it is not contradictory, and he can figure skate around it. It's all a question of image. And we'll see if the image that he himself built of a guy of the people, a guy of the workers who's going to be there for them, if that message will uh, trump the message of, uh, hey, look who he's acquainting himself with. Look who's giving the money to the political party that is the the Conservative Party of Canada. He's going to use their money to get elected, and he claims that he will have nothing to do uh, with with uh, these big uh, captain of industries, with these lobbyists, and so on and so forth. What I find sad in all this, because we all picture, I am not, by the way, for, for all our listeners, I am absolutely not a lobbyist for anyone, anybody, any firm, any anything. I am my own person, and I voice my opinion for myself. I don't even represent a political party. But in what he's doing, and I'm looking and I know a lot of lobbyists, and we look at the word lobbyist as if it was something to spit on. But oh. I've, I've seen some lobbyists in action that works for some uh, nonprofit organization that do listen to what people on the ground are doing and, and trying to, to build a case to convince those guys who represent us to do the right thing on different, in different aspects. They're all making it, uh, Mr. Polyev especially, making it as if it's all the bad guys in, in the world. So now he's kind of cut 
with with his his past uh, uh, um, phrase that he, he uttered in the house or anywhere, and now we are, and and everybody, I was making the same point, and I hadn't read Kate and Ashley, and I'm glad that they put some names into it, but I'm thinking, boy, wouldn't that be fun to see who participate in all these big hush-hush, nice neighborhood uh, fundraisers, how they can, I know how hard it was to, to fundraise, and yeah. to fundraise to that extent, I mean, it's not spaghetti nights that bring you that type of money. So it needs to be the big bucks. And who has the big bucks? So it's kind of contradictory, but will it percolate down to the, the public? I'm not so sure about that. Okay, so that's where I wanted to bring in Emily, because she is outside this Ottawa bubble, and she often punctures it with her insight. So that's what I wanted to ask you about. But before we do that, I just want to point out a couple <laughs> of things uh, in this reporting. Um, th th this is what I wonder about, whether people receive these initial messages and how they view this. That, you know, Mr. Polyev said in December he expressed disdain for Bay Street executives, says he almost never speaks uh, in downtown Toronto or anywhere close to Bay Street, but fundraising records show, and he's had three fundraisers directly on Bay Street. Street and four others in downtown Toronto. And we've seen people there, such as lobbyists for Atkins Realis, formerly known as SNC Lavaline, including one of the people who <laughs> lobbied for the deferred prosecution agreement, which was at the heart of the SNC Lavaline controversy here in Ottawa. So, what, what do you make of this, Emily? How do you think uh, people will, will see stories like this? Uh, well, first of all, I'm not in Ottawa, but I, I read the newspapers. <laughs> And I, I, uh, I remember very clearly in March, uh, the heat with Pierre Poiliev and lobbyists uh, was that uh, his uh, lead advisor, I don't know exactly what's her, what's her, what's her title, but Jenny Byrne mm -hmm. was on the hot seat uh, because um, she, her firm, not her personally, but her firm, and some people that work for her as lobbyists had... Uh, or still have low blows as a client, while uh, Pierre Poilier was talking about you know big groceries and and and, and whatnot in, in inflation, and so there's a conflict of interest there. Uh, and I also you can see that the the op-ed that he wrote in the National Post is basically uh, a speech or part of a speech that he's been uh, he, repeating or testing on the ground with Ch Chamber of Commerce for, right. for a number of weeks, if not months now as well. So he's been saying it a lot. And I, I'm just w wondering about the irony of him, you know, being basically asking the NDP, NDP members of parliament, asking questions about his relationship to lobbyists, his relationship to, you know, in indirectly uh, to low blogs, and then coming up with this strategy that basically just puts the, 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 the fire or the heat back on the lobbyists themselves, there's something very Machiavellian uh, in terms of what's going on. The timing of it all, and of course, who thought about it, probably, you know, that that, that same woman, Jenny Byrne, had a role in how this was thought, thought through. And so the level of, um, yeah, tactical strategy here that we come from a conversation with, where Pierre Poyev was under fire for his relationship to lobbying, and to now have a conversation where Pierre Poilievre is saying, no, I'm not talking to lobbyists, I'm talking to real people. And then this investigation from the CBC that's saying, well, actually, here are the receipts of you talking uh, to lobbyists, of you being on the Bay Street. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, what, we're, what we're having is basically a battleground of how to frame an uh, issue. And everybody's just trying to reframe and pivot the conversation back to actually, what are you doing, Pierre Poilievre? versus him talking about what business leaders are doing and what, you know, the people are doing and ignoring the issue by creating an even bigger fire next to the fire uh, that people were investigating. Okay, th that's an interesting point there. And Kate, you know, like uh, we have lobbyists on the show, lobbyists on the show, you're a lobbyist. There is nothing wrong with being a lobbyist. It is a regulated, Thank you. ethical. No, no, look, <laughs> it's like any profession. There's going to be people who are good actors. There's going to be people who are bad sure. actors. And that's just the way it is in any line of work, and, you know, in, including journalism. But, you know, it, it goes back to what I find interesting about this is that the National Post, like when Ashley and Kate went to the conservatives for response to this, it was the, oh, your CBC bias, you blah, 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 that sort of attack on us. The National Post, I don't think we can categor categorize them as anti-conservative by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. They've done the checking, too, that uh, Emily was talking about. That is an interesting development in this, is it not? That he says a certain thing, and we see multiple media outlets 
digging into it this week in a way that we haven't seen necessarily in the past. Yeah, I, I think when you take a shot across the bow at an entire kind of class of, of industry, in this mm -hmm. case, corporate Canada, the response to that is going to be, well, let's dig into this further. I wonder if there's something, if there's a there there. Um, in my observation, uh, Polyev has been on this for, for months or longer. If you look at his kind of political MO, it has never been to be kind of the voice of corporate Canada around mm -hmm. around the, the caucus table. So I think this speaks more to um, kind of his motivation for being here, why he's doing these things, as opposed to an issues management response like like what Emily may be suggesting. For sure, the timing, I think, is is an interesting component of this. I suspect it's more, though, a reaction to kind of what he's saying to corporate Canada. And to be clear, part of the frustration from the opposition is that uh, Corporate Canada and others come to them with the problems that they have with the current government. Mm -hmm. And then they never speak up and actually lend voice to those problems themselves. Very unusual. They expect the opposition to carry all the water when there is a problem with government policy and then sit back and let the Conservatives do the dirty work. And I think that Polyev is saying, mm -hmm. rightly, um, you have to carry your own water here. Like, we are not, we are not against you, necessarily. But, my God, if you have a problem with government policy, speak up. And that has not happened for years because, in my view, the Trudeau government has created a dynamic with corporate handouts, et cetera, that make it impossible for corporate Canada to do that without financial repercussion. Okay, well, the Chamber of Commerce and the Business Council have been critical of the government policy and they've spoken out about it. I mean, those two organizations, but you mean individual companies as opposed to the umbrella Yeah, there, there has also been some of the umbrella organizations, mm -hmm. I would say, have have rushed to celebrate minor achievements like thanks for not beating us over the head so badly as you as you could have federal government right like the beer lobby which uh, he has particularly targeted